Sarah with the trains and today I'm exploring a bit more of the East Midlands. I'm going to go and hop aboard a lovely Meridian on a journey between Nottingham and Loughborough. Our first station of the day is going to be Beeston. Beeston Station. If you are leaving us here, please do ensure to stay cool. Personal belongings with you. We'll ask the train, please step behind the online platform so the train can depart safely. First class accommodation is at the front of the train. So I have now made it to Beeston. This station was opened in 1839 by the Midlands Counties Railway. The buildings here, the uh, shelters and the canopy on platform one are actually grade two listed now. The station buildings here aren't original though. The original building has been described as little more than a cottage and the current station buildings were opened in 1847. There was an extension to the buildings in the Edwardian period, but this has since been demolished. Um, even though the buildings are listed, the Edwardian extension wasn't considered significant, essentially. We are sorry. The wooden and wrought iron and glass canopies at the station were brought here in 1871. Uh, they were originally from Southwell Station, but this was being rebuilt. In 1937, under the LNER, there were plans to put an additional waiting room on Platform 2. However, this name never came to anything. It, uh, it was just an idea, clearly. The level crossing, footbridge and signal box at the station were here until 1969. In 1969, the Beeston and Stapleford Urban District something um, had the idea to build a road bridge over the line um, to ease congestion because when the um, level crossing gate was being frequently opened and closed, there was a lot of traffic backing up and building the road bridge essentially replaced the footbridge for access between the platforms. Now I mentioned that the buildings are now grade 2 listed but in the 1980s um, 
British Rail actually wanted to demolish them because there'd been a lot of vandalism, they'd been neglected, but uh, a local campaign and a campaign from railway historians fortunately saved them and they got made listed in 1987 and were subsequently renovated. The masonry of the original platforms here at Beeston actually survived as late as 2004 when the platforms were completely rebuilt. Just to show what an impact the railways had in the area, in the 1881 census in Beeston it was recorded that 141 men worked on the railways, although it's not entirely clear how many of these worked at Beeston. Network Rail have expressed a desire to extend the platforms up to 69 metres, but this hasn't happened just yet. In January of 2024 they did, however, start a programme of works to install lifts at the station so that uh, full level access can be provided between the platforms. Now that we've had that little station history, let's have a quick run round and run down of the station facilities here at Beeston. We have got two platforms here at Beeston. We also have the waiting shelters with canopies that I mentioned. And up there's the road bridge to provide access between the platforms. We've got a very nice mile post here on the platform. Calling it Nottingham and Newark Castle. This train will not be calling at Carlton, Loudoun and Fiskerton today. This is due to a late running train being in front of this This train is... plastic bins, plenty of benches in the waiting shelter, an accessibility ramp, information signs, we've also got onward travel information, there's also a ticket machine, a grip bin and smart card reader. And down here we've got a really quite narrow ramp, you can only really fit one person with bag down it. I've just discovered that the access between the platforms at Beeston is quite long-winded. Um, I thought it would be a tiny little walk up to the road bridge. I don't think it's helped by the fact that there is that construction work going on um, for accessibility at the station. So I'm going to have to make this quite a, uh, quite a quick trip between the platforms because I haven't got that long until my next train. So let's go and have a very brief explore of platform one the temporary route to platform one. All I can say is give yourself plenty of time if you need to get between the platforms at Beeston.
walk up on the road bridge you do get a really lovely view of the station building. Over here we've got more station information, a help point, ticket office and way out, lovely information sign about Beeston Station and its history, departure screen just the same as we had on the other platform, this lovely raw iron work, more flappy plastic bins and an induction loop. We've also got the really lovely canopy and the benches under it. Out here in the car park we have got cycle parking and obviously we've got the station improvement works ongoing. Something else in the station building I forgot to show you is that there are toilets uh, but right now I've got to get back over to the other platform ready for my train to Attenborough. My parting thought as it were on Beeston is that in spite of it being such a small station it is actually really busy because you've got trains going to Lincoln, Nottingham, Derby even down to London, Leicester. I mean, the trains aren't going to London today, they're only going as far as Bedford. For a two-platform station, it sees a heck of a lot of traffic. Oh, and not forgetting Cardiff Central. Yeah, you can get to Wales from here. Attenborough, East Midlands Parkway, Loughborough, Barrow-upon-Saw, Sileby, Sidestone, and Leicester. This train is called the Tuca. We have made it to Attenborough. Oop, level crossing's gone down. What's coming through? One seventy one one three. And here comes the Meridian. I suspect we'll be seeing a lot of trains at Attenborough as well. Attenborough was originally opened by the Midland Counties Railway as just a roadside halt in 1856 and this closed in 1858. The station was next to a level crossing as we've just seen and originally tickets were just bought from the crossing keeper. In 1864 it was then reopened as Attenborough by the Midland Railway. In April 1937 it was renamed to Chilwell but after a vigorous campaign from locals in September of the same year it was returned to its previous name Attenborough. The platforms here were extended during the First World War because it was used extensively by soldiers and by the workers at the National Shelling Factory No. 6 at Chilwell. The station still had a signal box into the 1980s but sadly that has since been demolished. The station also lost its staffing and station buildings in the 1990s. Following the rebuild of the platforms in 2005, the only bit of the original station that remains is the towers for the footbridge, and the footbridge was given a new steel deck and stairways in 2007. Now that we've had that brief little station history, let's go and have a run round and run down of the station facilities here at Attenborough. But first, another train is coming. Right, this signal is fully red, so I'm assuming it's coming from the other direction and my battery is going to die. That was 170 112.
Here at Attenborough we have got two platforms. Here on platform two we have got some lovely planters, a good old grip bin, lots more planters and further down the platform we have got benches. We've also got a level crossing that's uh, going down again. One seventy five three five. Now let's go take a walk over the footbridge. We've also got that delightful staple of most stations, the bus shelter style waiting shelter. Not to forget a flappy plastic bin also. So we've got the footbridge and we've got level access across the level crossing. So you've got to go on the road for level access. I've also just found a black George the Sixth post box. Seventy five zero two and two 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 zero zero six. Over on platform two, we have got the great big bus shelter style waiting shelter, complete with ticket machine and loads of these seats with the handles in between. We also have cycle parking, another grip bin, and down here we've got some lovely artwork, including a little Midland Railway locomotive, numbered as 1864, the year the station was opened. Well, reopened, I should say. We also have these lovely planters. We also have this lovely British Rail sign which according to the little sign at the top left corner is a mini beast hotel so that's for all the all the bugs and stuff to live in and the level crossing is going down again i think this is the most a level crossing has gone down while i've been at a station that was 17619 17622 Right, the level crossing has gone back up. It's time to explore some more of the station. Information signs, including onward travel information, little poster with miles on it, and a train timetable, which is very useful because I haven't actually seen any departure screens here. Also a good old warning sign about not having a ticket. So as we were saying earlier, the only bits of the original station that remain are these pillars on the footbridge and they are known as blue brick because they're kind of bluish. Right, I'm going to go back to the other platform and see if I can find a timetable for the train I actually need to get um, because as I say, no departure screens at all. There isn't even a departures -y bit on the ticket machine, which I have seen at other stations. But uh, before the level co crossing goes down yet again, Let's head back. And on this pillar we have got a memorial to the staff who lost their lives in the Great War, 1914 to 1918. Although it is a replica of the original. How did I know the level crossing's going down again?
Now that train's gone through, I'm going to bring up the distinct lack of information on platform two, by which I mean there's no timetable over here. So I'm going to have to, and you're not going to believe this, I'm going to have to get my phone out and look. So I've checked real-time trains and the train I wanted should have been here in about nine minutes. Um, unfortunately, that has been delayed, so it's now got not going to be here until 12.52 into, instead of 12.36. Um, it's going to really cut down my time at East Midlands Parkway, but we'll get through. <laughs> You gotta love a good old freight train coming through, 66061 DB Cargo. Right, the level crossing is going down again. Is this our train? I'm not sure. Well, whether it's our train or not, it's coming this way because the signals have gone double orange. Two 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 zero one nine. Nearly missed that one by looking at real time trains to see when my train is showing up. One seventy one one two going to Birmingham New Street. Level crossing is down again. Will this be our train? In answer to that question, no. One seventy five oh five and five oh nine. Well, the signal's red and the train is approaching very slowly. I'm going to take a gamble on this being our train. It is 172.70 and it is very definitely coming to a halt. after I've done station history and stuff like that. But there's a Meridian coming in on the platform I was on and uh, I want to get a good shot of it.
So I think I'm right in saying that this is the newest station I've visited on any of my railway adventures. This station only opened in January 2009, which I'm suddenly realising is actually 15 years ago. <laughs> the station was actually supposed to open in December 2008, after construction had begun on the station in December 2007. Obviously, as it's such a new station, there's not a heck of a lot of history with it, but one thing I will bring up, it's controversial in one way because of um, its location. It's quite poorly located. I mean, it's on signs it says for East Midlands Airport, but East Midlands Airport is actually four miles away and there's no public transport link between East Midlands Parkway and East Midlands Airport which I think is just stupid, to be honest. Surely they could have a shuttle bus service, that would make more sense, especially as there's an aeroplane on the station sign. As you might imagine, there's not actually a place called East Midlands Parkway. This is actually located near Ratcliffe on Saw. I think I'm saying that correctly. And it's right next to Ratcliffe Power Station. I'm going to see if I can get you a good shot of the cooling towers, because I've seen these whilst on the train quite a lot. Um, and I've always thought they were quite impressive. Um, they're even more impressive in person. They're flipping enormous. <laughs> Take a look at this. I think these cooling towers are amazing. A feat of engineering. Some people may say I'm over enthusiastic about them. The 1330 East Midlands Railway service to Lincoln Central. One five eight seven seven seven. Saw that train earlier. Was actually on that train earlier. Oh, and another Meridian. Shall we see if we can get down to the other end of the platform to get those going out? Let's go. It's time for that run round and run down of the station facilities here at East Midlands Parkway. We've got station signs with that uh, aeroplane I mentioned. There's actually four platforms here at East Midlands Parkway. There's two slow and two fast. Although I was on a slow train and a fast train went from the slow train platform. Uh, I don't know. As you can see, it's a very modern looking station as you can imagine for a station that was built in 2009 I've just suddenly realized I've been to Cambridge North and I think that's newer than this I'm gonna check but I think Cambridge North is newer than this I, I lied when I said this is the newest station I've been to possibly so up there we've got the footbridge to provide access between all the platforms and the main station building there is also the lift up to the concourse We've got bus shelter style waiting shelters with attached flappy plastic bins. There's also grip bins and plenty of information signs. Now let's head up and over on the footbridge to see what's going on on platform one because that's where the main station building is. Hoping there's a loo because uh, I haven't been since about 25 to 10 when I was at Nottingham. There we've got a waiting room. Very glad to see a sign for the toilets. Heading out this way. Out here we have got the car park. There's plenty of accessible parking. That's something I always like to see. 
and another shot of the cooling towers. Got this really nice station map as well, like we had at Grantham. We've also got cycle parking. And there we have it, the lovely station building. In there's toilets, ticket office, customer lounge, all that good stuff. I'm gonna head back into the station now because I've just got a little bit of time until the train to Loughborough. My old mate Miles. have now made it to Loughborough. It's just started raining so I've decided to come under the canopy to shelter. The original station in Loughborough was opened by the Midland Counties Railway in 1840, just to the south of here. This station was actually opened in 1872 and when this was opened the track into Loughborough was quadrupled. Another railway thing Loughborough is famous for is Brush Traction Works which opened in 1880 and provided some really lovely diesel locomotives in the British Rail era. Some examples of the diesel locomotives built at Brush Traction are the Class 31, the 60, the Class 47, some of which were rebuilt to Class 57. At one time it was known as Loughborough Midland to differentiate it from the other two stations that were in Loughborough at the time. Those were Loughborough Derby Road and Loughborough Central, although both of those did close. Loughborough Central has been reopened as part of a heritage line. Now that we've had that little station history, let's have a look at the facilities here at Loughborough today. There are three platforms here at Loughborough on which we have got benches, station signs of course, accessibility ramps, information signs, flappy plastic bins, dot matrix departure screens, a help point. A £7 million package of improvements started at the station in 2010, including the lengthening of the platforms, meaning that platform 1 and 2 can accommodate 10 car units and platform 3 can accommodate 7 cars, though it's also lifts to all platforms and refurbishment of things like the ticket office. Over on platform 1 you have got waiting room, toilets and the ticket barriers. We've also got the footbridge, so let's take a wander over there. We also have the lift between the footbridge and the platforms. There's also a station shop and a coffee bar and kitchen, speciality coffee and tea. And not to forget the waiting room. Out here in the car park we've got a lovely view of the station building although part of it is uh, covered in scaffolding. In that bit of the building, you have got a ticket office. Oh, look what I've spotted, a phone box. But does it work? I'm not hearing dial tone, so I'm gonna go no. Although it does say insert coins, but there's no dial tone. Also, it stinks in here. There is also cycle parking, a departure screen, Another one of these station diagrams. I wish every station had this. Unfortunately, the town centre at Loughborough is about two thirds of a mile walk away. So by the time I got there, I have to immediately come back. So I may just stay at the station and get a nice coffee because I missed out on that um, in one of my previous videos when I really wanted a coffee because I left it too late. Funny little thing, when I was a kid I thought that Loughborough was actually Loughborough because I'd never seen it written down, only heard people say it. Now I've found out it's spelt Loughborough. Oh, 
however you want to say how it's spelled. If you want to say it Loughborough, it should be L-U-F-F Borough, surely? was absolutely rammed. I was fortunate enough to have a seat but there were people standing in the vestibule area. It's just time for me to say thank you everybody so much for watching. Thank you to everybody who likes, comments, subscribes. Special thank you to my channel members and patrons whose names will be on screen in a moment. Thanks to everybody who donates to me on Ko-fi. If you have enjoyed this video please drop a like, drop a comment and consider subscribing to see more from me. I'll see you all next time for another railway adventure. Bye. As always, an extra special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. You really do keep this channel going. If you'd like to become a patron or channel member or donate to me on Ko-fi, the links to do so are in the description below.